You know it's a Kojima trailer when you see little human figures coming out of cigarette smoke, like it's nobody's business. Hideo Kojima is back with one hell of a crazy trailer for Death Stranding 2. From talking puppets to baby-controlled cyborg samurai, just when you thought these trailers couldn't get any crazier, Kojima manages to surpass all that and then some. And while you might think you've noticed everything by watching this trailer maybe once or twice, just like every other Kojima trailer, you can expect to find some interesting details that may easily go unnoticed. So in this video, we'll be covering 25 details you might have missed from the State of Play trailer of Death Stranding 2 on the beach. Python Selk in Detective Mode, kicking in. I'll be waiting for you on the beach. We'll be starting off this analysis with the title of the game itself, and while On the Beach is a quote we heard numerous times in the first game, it is also the name of a 1957 novel that had a film adaptation in 1959, one which Hideo Kojima also tweeted about back in August of 23. A post-apocalyptic science fiction drama depicting the aftermath of a nuclear war that destroyed most of humanity, leading to a surge of hope for the remaining people in an American submarine. Now we're sure fans of Death Stranding can already relate to some of the things we mentioned from this movie, like the post-apocalyptic setting, the absence of humanity, or even the submarine itself in comparison to the Magellan. And that's not all, as there are even more similarities, such as a character by the name of Peter Holmes, in comparison to Peter Englert, who we all know as Higgs. On the beaches Commander Dwight Towers being in denial about the loss of his wife and children in the Holocaust, very much reminiscent of Sam being in denial about the loss of his wife and unborn child. And his wife who died, her name was Lucy. She'd been pregnant, poor woman. They were going to name their son, Lou. Didn't happen. But it did. President Strand told me. She talked about you all the time. He didn't have to cut all ties and walk away, she said. You wanna shut the fuck up? All the way to car racing, or better known as the Grand Prix from On the Beach, which immediately reminded us of the race track that we actually got in that stranding director's cut. So if anyone thought the race track was a bit out of place in the post-apocalyptic setting of Death Stranding, whenever Kojima is involved, you can be sure that there's a valid reason behind its inspiration. While the strands in the first game's logo were shown going downwards, the ones in Death Stranding 2 appear to be inverted, going upwards this time around. And while this could simply be a design change, it could also imply a distinction from what we've experienced before. One example is the fact that Sam is choosing more guns this time around, which as per that Stranding's team, is symbolized by the stick rather than rope. Looks like you decided to trade in that rope for a stick this go around. Well, I suppose even a porter has to pull the trigger from time to time. As fans may know, the captain of the Magellan is modeled after none other than George Miller, the director of the popular Mad Max franchise and a good friend of Hideo Kojima. Something most fans might have missed though is that his character is shown immediately after the tagline On the Road, which is surely meant as a nod to Fury Road, the title behind Miller's 2015 Mad Max reboot and one of Hideo Kojima's favorite movies of all time. A novel of Moby Dick can be seen in Sam's room, and while references from the story and characters of Moby Dick had already been featured in The Phantom Pain, we might be seeing this theme again in that Stranding too, with the captain that is George Miller's character also having an amputated arm, and the Magellan representing Captain Ahab's ship, Pequod. In fact, Kojima also retweeted a post which called George Miller's character Captain Ahab. Of course, time will tell whether these references are related to the overall story, or if they could be simple nods to the novel.
this cat reminds us of the black cat that Kojima was pictured with. Now this cat appears to have all the characteristics of a BT creature, even having wings, which could be related to the wings on the BT looking baby inside the pod, as well as the fake wings which Louise was seen wearing in the first trailer. The cat's tongue also comes in the form of a tentacle, further relating to the characteristics of BT creatures. Speaking of tentacles, the circular markings on the arm that we see in this shot appears to have been deliberately made to resemble the tentacle of an octopus, with the liquid coming out of the arm even being reminiscent of octopus ink. As you may know, we also saw an octopus in the BB pod at the end of the first trailer, but more on that later in this video. And speaking of cats and octopus, the captain also has a pin that shows what appears to be a cat with octopus-like tentacles, which could further unravel the animal's true nature, with its characteristics bearing great similarity with those found in BT creatures. In fact, in one of the captain's other pins, one can also spot the words, Beach Stings. The captain appears to be using his amputated arm to... Activate it. As he appears to connect himself to the Magellan, while Tar surrounds his amputated arm, which could perhaps be functioning as a sort of ID tagged system, in a similar fashion to the ID tagged weapons in MGS4. It's also worth noting that once he connects himself to the Magellan, more Tar starts coming out of the captain's hair, which leads us to question whether the Magellan could somehow be powered or even controlled through the use of Tar itself. The color which Sam and Fragile are seen in inside the Magellan is pretty much the same color which Sam has in the seam, and the reason they might be in this color while inside the Magellan is possibly due to the ship traversing through the seam, the purgatory state between the world of the living and the beach. In this scene, we can also see what appears to be a VR headset, which can be a great way for players to train and test out new weapons very much like the VR aspect in that stranding director's cut. This puppet is modeled after Fatih Akin, a German film director who directed the movie starring Norman Reedus' wife, Diane Kruger. And while one might think that this character is a bit out of place in the world of that stranding, this puppet is actually very reminiscent of the animated doll that we see towards the end of the first game, the baby doll that is shown during Baby Sam's repatriation sequence, which also had stop motion animation, a feature Kojima deliberately wanted for the puppet, purposely dropping its frame rate. Kojima says that as we play the game, we'll get to learn why this character became this way, which can imply that this character could have once been human, and who might have been connected to the puppet in some way, perhaps through the concept of Ka and Ha. In fact, in the first game, Dead Man also describes himself as a soulless meat puppet, as he mentions having no Ka, in relation to his artificial body. I'm a soulless meat puppet. No Ka. A dead man. People born the traditional way have beaches. You have one, BB2, but I have no such connections. Judging by a picture Kojima uploaded on Twitter and the various inspired themes in his games, it's highly possible we might also get to see some Pinocchio references throughout our journey in that Stranding too. Speaking of the journey, Kojima confirms that the terrain will change in real time during the game, further stating that there will be earthquakes forest fires, and floods that can cause roads to be cut off, and which were all featured in the new trailer. The BT creature which Sam battles appears to have destroyed cars attached to its back, among other forms of debris. During certain scenes, Sam is seen wearing some kind of ring device, and while we're yet to be made aware what this is used for, it's highly possible that this device could replace the cufflinks from the first game in terms of gameplay features. Both incinerators to the north. This route's crawling with BTs. Sure you can't use another? I wish I could, but there's no time. A similar ring can also be seen on Fragile's blue gloves. You know what this is? If this is 
the moon? Always one step closer, guys. The moon was teased in the first Death Stranding game by Cliff, Sam's father, who gave him an astronaut figure that came in the form of the Ludens character from the Kojima Productions logo movie. Only you can screw whatever you want. Even the moon. I don't know about you guys, but I'm still leaning towards the idea that Sam might turn out to be Ludens at some point in the franchise, especially with the way the first game ended. Kojima may have said Ludens is not related to that stranding in any way, but if that was true, he would neither appear as the little astronaut, nor would we have Ludens fan. And sure, some might argue that the character was created solely for the Kojima Productions logo, but let's not forget that the old logo was pretty much the Fox unit from Metal Gear, so you never know whether we might see Ludens in action someday. Kojima says a lot of things to hide his twists, we can mention a couple examples, but we're sure everyone learns their lesson sooner or later. Brought you an astronaut. Mankind can go anywhere, even out of space. If you enjoy watching our videos, we'd appreciate if you could show us your support on Patreon. These videos consist of long hours of writing, recording and editing, and with your support on Patreon, you can now help us improve and evolve our channel, allowing us to give you even more videos in a shorter time. In doing so, you'll be able to benefit from exclusive Metal Gear journals, sneak peeks from our upcoming work, your name listed at the end of all our videos, early access and many more. Head over to patreon.com forward slash pythonselkin for more. Now onto the crazy battle between Higgs and, as this thing doesn't have a name yet, we'll just call it Cyborg Samurai for now. The mechanical object forming part of its head very much resembles the other deck scanning device from the first game. As the fight between Higgs and the Cyborg takes off, we can continuously hear baby sounds coming from it, which seems to suggest it could be controlled by a BB, maybe even Lou herself, since the Cyborg can be seen freeing Sam soon after it arrives. A related point to note is that the octopus in the BB pod from the first trailer is also heard making similar baby sounds, to which Sam asks if it was Lou. Hello? Does Lou exist in some kind of spiritual form? Could her ka be controlling such entities? As soon as the battle begins, upon equipping his guitar-like weapon, Higgs can be heard playing what sounds like the first musical notes from BB's team. This further suggests that Cyborg Samurai could truly be under the possession of Lou, in some shape or form. Was it you, Higgs? Huh? Was it you that killed Lou? You still don't know, do you? As Fragile smokes, we can see little human figures appear out of her cigarette smoke, which may even be reminiscent of BT-like entities. These can be seen both in the trailer and in Fragile's poster. This was actually inspired by a sculpture from Saint Kuya, which Kojima even confirmed following the new trailer. As to why that thing comes out of her smoke, Kojima asks fans to use their imagination. 
Hopefully, it'll have some great significance in the overall story. Maybe even relating to the mysterious fact that her skin no longer appears deteriorated following exposure to timefall. Only time will tell. As the chrysalis is opened and we get to see more of Elle Fanning's character, we can actually see her face is covered in what appears to be a golden face mask, made out of a gold substance of sorts. This may potentially symbolize the belief of ancient Egyptians, who made death masks on mummified bodies for the soul to recognize its body and to guard it from evil spirits on its way to the afterlife. These masks were mostly covered in gold and jewels, while less wealthy people had masks made out of linen or papyrus and painted gold. In ancient Egypt, gold represented that which was eternal and indestructible and was often associated with the gods. As fans may know, the first game featured plenty of references to ancient Egypt, such as Higgs's golden death mask and numerous characteristics on his outfit. Body bags resembling mummified corpses, as well as the concept of Ka and Ha, so it'll be interesting to see if there will be more of these references behind the mystery of Al Fanning's character. Emily's a blank slate too. No past, no record she ever existed. She's a ghost. I'll be waiting for you on the beach. I've been waiting for you, right here ever since. The dress she's wearing here appears to be the same one which actress Elle Fanning was wearing in one of the early posters. And while this scene was deliberately edited to mislead the viewer as if it was the same sequence, these scenes appear to be set in different rooms and different moments, with this part continuing from the sequence in which her character is released from the chrysalis, with her hair looking darker possibly from the fluid she was covered in. I don't know about you guys, but her dress kinda looks older than the clothing we are seeing in the current world of that Stranding. After all, we don't know for how long her character had been buried in that chrysalis. It's also worth noting that Fanning's character has a bandage on her left elbow, which appears to be replaced with a new bandage during the other sequence. There is no denying that Fanning's character is perhaps the most mysterious character yet. She appears to have threads, or strands, attached to her, which can be seen in both of her sequences, and which she's even floating by, as Kojima himself confirmed. The guards that Sam battles in the trailer are also seen floating by similar threads attached to them. Could there be a connection of some kind with the mystery behind Fanning's character? Food for thought. Something we talked about in our previous Death Stranding 2 analysis is that Higgs appears to be saying words that could somehow be manifested from Sam's own past, such as the exact same words spoken by Cliff Unger, Sam's father, to baby Sam. Baby, don't worry, it's okay. I'll always be with you. Baby. As well as Higgs singing BB's theme in the first trailer, which is a lullaby that Cliff sang to Baby Sam. See the sunset, the day is ending. So let love warm till the morning. And in this new trailer, we actually have another of those. See? It's like I'm not even here. Same as it ever was. Same as it ever was. Same as it ever was. And while this could simply be a coincidence, it surely is an interesting one, especially considering Higgs was already saying words he shouldn't have heard. And with one of this game's questions being, should we have connected? You just never know. Now, the golden question is whether there could be a connection of some kind between Al Fanning's character and Lou, or whether they could even be one and the same. There seems to be an emphasis on the eye color of Fanning's character, and the baby that's shown in the repatriation sequence right after. And while repatriation sequences have always been mysterious, the baby in the repatriation scenes from the first game also had green eyes. Except for the baby doll that is seen when Amelie revives baby Sam, which appeared to have blue eyes, like Sam. 
What's interesting to note though is that the baby Sam that's awakened by Amelie appears to have green eyes during the game's epilogue, although this might be explained by the fact that some babies could change eye color in their growth. Still, with Kojima you never know which detail may or may not be hiding the next twist. Remember the circular markings on the arm which we talked about earlier in the video? Specifically the ones that were deliberately shown to resemble an octopus tentacle. Whatever was inside the BB pod at the end of the first trailer took the form of an octopus, which Kojima specifically called Octopus Lou, further leading towards the theory that Fanning's character could be connected to Lou, or could even be Lou herself, maybe with the separation of her Ka and Ha in a similar fashion to Amelie and Bridget. I was split across two worlds. Bridget, my Ha in that one. Amelie, my Ka in this. Somehow, the two of us managed to coexist. Soon, our ages began to diverge. On a related note, remember when we said that Cyborg Samurai might be controlled by a BB, and maybe even Lou herself? Actress Elle Fenning particularly called the trailer's fight sequence with Higgs as special before expressing a cute little laugh, which might be her way of teasing us that her character could somehow be involved in that fight. That sequence with Higgs, the villain, um, is really special. <laughs> you see, after you left Bridges, I decided to do a little digging. Now, according to them, BB-28 was flagged for disposal and subsequently incinerated four years ago, long before you and Lou first met. As with most of Kojima's storytelling, nothing is as it seems, and as we mysteriously learn at the end of this trailer, BB-28 was incinerated before the events of Death Stranding 1, which could mean that whoever or whichever entity was in that pod possibly made its way inside, uninvited, with intentions that nobody knows yet. If you want answers, you're gonna have to find them yourself. But the ones you do find, well, that pain you nurse, will only get worse. Whether it's Ocelot or Cliff Unger, most of Kojima's villains have some sort of ulterior motive, and we honestly don't believe Higgs is back just to kill Sam and Fragile, as the trailer suggests. We think Higgs could have a personal agenda, rather than just wanting to kill them out of revenge. Hey brother, did you miss me? The word Higgs calls Sam, brother, has been on many fans' minds ever since the release of the trailer, now as we know from the first game, Bridget would raise Sam as her son, Sam Strand, and with Amelie playing the role of Bridget's daughter, Sam technically became Amelie's adoptive brother. The fact that Higgs is now rocking a similar hairstyle as Amelie, and is also wearing her kipu, might suggest a connection of sorts between Higgs and Amelie, which could explain why Higgs now calls Sam, brother. And let's not forget Amelie's previous connection to Sam, which might also explain Higgs knowing more of Sam's past. You're free, but we're still connected. Don't tell me we're not. Something which could also be of relevance is that Brother is actually the last word that is seen in the 1959 movie, On the Beach, the same film which Death Stranding is inspired by. The movie ends with a street banner that reads, There is still time, Brother, as part of a Salvation Army. Perhaps Higgs has his own intentions for wanting to kill whoever Lou really is, and maybe Sam and Fragile are just in his way, not knowing the full picture. Of course, if this guy is Higgs, or at least someone working for him. Was it you, Higgs? Huh? Was it you that killed Lou? You still don't know, do you? While Higgs's past is a mysterious one, the director's cut of that stranding did shed more light on his origins, with Higgs working with Fragile's mother, Coffin, and being one of the very few who came to learn of the dark past of bridges, with the slaughtering of experimental bridge babies and the destruction of their own facility, so no one knows what other knowledge Higgs may have acquired throughout his journey. Let's also not forget this scene from the first game, where Higgs was seen worshipping Amelie from afar, until he's aware of Sam's arrival, and Higgs continues the act. Sam the man, in the dark, about everything. 
If Al Fanning's character really is Lou, then she could be someone important who Sam and the team are yet to be made aware of. A truth that can change the entire perspective of what we knew, and perhaps a truth which Sam would be better off not knowing, because as Higgs tells him, the pain he nurses will only get worse. We hope you enjoyed these 25 details from the new trailer of Death Stranding 2 on the beach. Apart from the discoveries presented, what we talked about was all based on our thoughts and ideas, and we now want to hear what you think about all this. Where do you think the story of Death Stranding 2 could be headed? Are there any details you managed to catch? We'd like to hear your opinions and theories, so be sure to let us know all about them in the comments section down below. For all things Death Stranding and Hideo Kojima, We'd appreciate if you could like this video and make sure to subscribe to our channel for all the latest content. Thanks for watching guys, until we meet again, keep on keeping on. Python and Selkin, out.